Hi everyone and welcome to Tuesday's Tips with Laurie. Today we'd like to talk about preventing those puckers. To start with, I kind of want to explain what we're talking about. So I don't know if you can zoom a little closer here. So this is a cute little cupcake. And this cupcake design, you can see it's puckered right up here, right here and around some of the sides because it's a heavy stitch out. Now we used a good stabilizer, but there's a few more extra things that you can do besides just a stabilizer that will help prevent those puckers from happening. And I'm gonna show you on top of that. This is one that we've actually added those extra items and you can see there's no puckering, even though it's a larger, heavier stitch, there's no puckering here and around here. So that is what we're trying to help you prevent. And I know if you do those heavy word stitch out, sometimes that's frustrating when you get it done and it's puckered and you're like, no, don't fret. Well, I'm gonna show you at the very end of the video of, of just a couple ideas that you can use in order to try to, to take your project that you already have done and remove some of those as well and get rid of some of that puckering, even though your project's already finished. All right. To start with, the first most important thing is stabilizer. Just remember, if it's a heavy stitch out, it's a heavy stabilizer. Don't use a medium or a lightweight stabilizer on a really heavy stitch out. And you can see this is, this is pretty heavy and this is cutaway. But what if you're making a quilt and you don't want the stabilizer to remain in? You can do a tearaway but use a heavyweight tearaway or a medium weight tearaway. Don't go with your lightweight tearaway. This is really strong. It, it is a tearaway though that you can so you can see that it is a tearaway and that is what we used on the back of this um, particular stitch out. So I'll show you how we did that a little bit later. The next thing is if you're making a stitch out that you re requires a water soluble stabilizer, you're gonna to wanna to double, I always double it. And this is a heavier water soluble stabilizer. It's just a fibrous one. So double your stabilizer. And if you're stitching, for example, if you're stitching out your quilted basket and it's stitching and it started to rip just a little bit, the stabilizer is because maybe it happened to get nicked while it was being trimmed or something, you float a piece of stabilizer over the top of your design because it's a wash away, you can get away with that and it's going to wash out. And what I mean by float is if this was a washable, you would just lay it over the top of your design where you were straight stitching and start stitching again. You'll stop your stitching and then start again after you've laved your stabilizer. And then it will continue to stitch uh, that stabilizer in. But when you're finished with your project, you can actually wash that out and it should work for you. The next uh, stabilizer I was going to show is the no-show mesh. This, this is a really nice, pliable, it's something good that if you want to leave it in your quilt, that's a great one to leave in your quilt. However, you want to double it as well. Doubling it's going to really help with the, the actual puckering of items. So this is the actual stabilizer that's going to go in your hoop. So now there's another type of stabilizer. We'll get to that in a second. The next thing I want to share with you is Terial Magic, and I love it. It's truly magic. So the Terial Magic is something um, we use all the time, and I use it when I'm preparing on almost all my applique pieces as well as my background. So I've got two pieces of fabric, the exact same, and one's been treated with Terial Magic. I'll give you, I'll let you guess which one, and one has not been treated with Terial Magic. So you can see how much uh, strength it gives that piece of fabric right there. So I'm gonna show you how I actually put the Terial Magic on my fabric. So here I have a background piece of fabric that I'm gonna use for my background, just like I did for this cupcake. So the first thing I do, I lay it face down, and the reason I put it face down is this, is, this has got a lot of starch. It's a high starch content. You can kind of see, I want, to, I want to be able to let you see that there's actually a lot on there. But the reason I do it face down is I don't want that starch, if this is a darker color, discoloring my fabric at all. Um, we have a question, what was that called again, that starch that you created? Terial Magic is what it's called. Now you can see it's all been ironed in now. Now this is treated, can you see how 
nice and stiff that material has become. Um, that is one of the big secrets right there. I love this stuff. That helps us so much. The second thing I'm going to do is, I know we've talked about it before, um, it's, there's a lot of products out there that are very similar to this. It's a fusible woven interfacing or fusible woven stabilizer. It can be called either. It's like fabric. See how I can wad it up and it's, it's got a fabric feel on one side and fusible uh, beads on the other. And it's called a fusible woven interfacing or fusible woven stabilizer. There's many brands that carry it. I think there's Bossel, there's uh, OESD, Exquisite, Pellon. Um, the Pellon brand is called Soft or is called Shapeflex. I know that we've maybe mentioned that before in other videos, but there's a lot of brands out there and they're really, really good. This is exactly what we put on the back of this, which has helped it so, so much. So I'm gonna show you how you would go about putting that on. So the first thing I do is I'm going to take it, put it on the back of my fabric that I'm going to be using and you don't want the fusible part. You want the fusible part so it's facing the fabric and then you iron it on. So it's really simple but if you think of it, I know the word stabilizer confuses sometimes because you're thinking you're supposed to put it in your hoop. You actually are putting that on the back of your fabric, so it's becoming part of your fabric. So if you just remember, the stabilizer that's the woven, fusible one, it's part of your fabric now, and it's going to be part of your project. So just remember, that's going to stay in your project. That's not something you peel off or cut away later. That stays in your project. And the other stabilizers are ones that are in your hoop that you can tear away, cut away, wash away, if you think about it like that. That is gonna help prevent a lot of the puckering right there. The very last thing that I would recommend is you can see I'm gonna take the treated piece, not the untreated piece. So for example, my large applique piece here, I want it to lay nice and flat. I want it to adhere to this fabric and not just float and bubble like it could bubble a little bit when you're actually doing your satin stitching. So I want it to adhere. So the best thing or the way I accomplish that, first I put the Terriol Magic so it's nice and stiff. The second thing is heat and bond. I just traced this so you can see that this is the paper side of the heat and bond, but I don't, I'm not going to use the tracing. I actually just take a piece of heat and bond and I iron it directly to the back of my applique fabric and I just cut it the same size as my fabric or smaller, that's totally fine. And then, I'm gonna let that cool for just a second. I'm gonna peel the paper off and I treat it as if this were just my regular piece of fabric. I just wanted to give that a second to cool. So can you- question. Yes. Um, they're asking if you're using the spray, do you also use the iron-on stabilizer? Do I do both? both. I use both. These heavy stitch outs, you're just gonna love the way they turn out. Have you ever had any stitching where it feels like you're, it's pulling some of the fabric or because it's stitched later on, it shifts like maybe a face and it, a nose maybe veers off just slightly or an eye? It's because your fabric has been stretched and it's being kind of manipulated in the hoop. So this is to prevent that from stretching or the manipulation to happen. So I use both, both the Terriol Magic and the, the stabilizer. Here, I'll show you, this has got the, that interfacing, the fusible stabilizer interfacing. Can you see that? So that's actually what's on the back of this. So the, now that I've got the heat and bond on the back of this applique piece, um, we would have our placement stitch for the frosting, and this would be in the hoop. Then I just treat this like it's a piece of fabric. I lay it right over it. I allow this, the tack down line to happen. And then I trim away the excess fabric. So we're gonna pretend like this is stitched down. And I'm gonna trim it away as if this was actually my frosting. And I'm really great at freestyle frosting. We're gonna make this look like a little piece of frosting on a cupcake. So if that was my frosting line and it was tacked down right here, 
you trim away that excess there's and then after you've trimmed away the excess that's when I would iron that down and when you iron it down then it is really nice and stuck to your fabric it's not going to shift on you and that way you can embroider around that and it should not have any puckering happen so that's those are the best steps that uh, we've just we stitch out every day and that's what we found works the best for us let me know if you've got other suggestions or ideas of things that you've tried that work for you and I'm gonna try to now we're gonna try to get some of these little puckers out I don't know if you can see them it's harder to see maybe on video that rather than up close but you can see there's some puckering here and around here and around here now if you've already made a project and you're worried about I've already got it done, I don't want to restitch it, I don't, I don't have that stuff right now with me, what can you do? Well, the best thing that I found is you lay, you lay your project face down, and I do have, this is a wool mat, you can either do it on a wool mat, um, if you have a regular ironing board, maybe place about three or four layers of fabric down so it has a little bit of cushion. The cushion is what's gonna be helpful here. And then I do take the Terio Magic, and I'm gonna iron that down. And I try to kind of press around where it's puckering the most with the end of my iron. And then I give it just an overall really good pressing. And the reason that you're gonna put it face down, and if I had a piece of fabric down, you could actually see that you can see the indentation of the stitches. So it allows the stitches to go down into your mat, but it makes the whole back piece flat, if that makes sense, because there is a little bit of, of uh, now look how flat that is. I don't know if you can see, we just eliminated all of those puckers, and all I did was iron it from the back using the Terriel Magic. And I first ironed around these little places where it was puckering, and then give it a good press down. And the reason it works from the back is there's texture. This, this satin stitch is popping out on the top and it's a lot flatter on the back. So therefore, when I iron it from the back side, the fabric stays flat. So I don't know if you could see that. That was kind of like fun magic right there, wasn't it? We have a question. What's the yes. difference between Terio Magic and other spray starches? Well, that is a great question. We have tried uh, some of the other starches it, I, I think it has to do with the high account or amount of starch that's in the Terriel Magic. If you've ever, I've tried other, uh, it, this has actually got some other, uh, it's called a stabilizer. It's not just a starch spray. So if you're looking for something, if you've got a starch spray and you've tried it and it gives you these same results, that's great. Go ahead and use that. But this does have, um, it's considered a stabilizer. It's meant to make that fabric really nice and stiff. So if you remember, well, I kind of cut my piece up, but if you remember how stiff it made this versus this, it would be a super, super heavy, heavy starch that you would be using. That's one of the reasons I would iron it from, you know, spray your starch on the backside anyway. I wouldn't spray it on the top, especially of darker fabrics, because you'll see those um, things. But definitely we'll find the ingredients out, the difference in the ingredients if you'd like, and we can let you know. But definitely uh, this is something that we found works really, really well for these types of projects. Are there any other questions out there? We did have one question asking to go over the fusible woven interfacing again. You bet. All right, so this fusible woven interfacing it's like fabric, it feels like fabric. It looks just like fabric on one side. It's like a woven fabric. So it's not as tight woven as say cotton or something uh, to that effect, but it is a woven fabric. And on the back side of the woven fabric is your beads of fusible like glue. That's what sticks to your, when you heat it up, that's what adheres to your the back of your fabric. So, I like a really good sturdy one. So if you're making, say, a t-shirt uh, type quilt out there, this is what I would recommend that you would even iron on the back of that to stabilize it so it stays nice and straight without stretching. So it's kind of the same concept. That's what I would have put on the back of your fabric because this is gonna be taut in the hoop and you're gonna be pulling, stitches start to pull a little bit and that keeps it from 
from pulling. So there's lots of brands out there. Just look for the words fusible woven interfacing or fusible woven stabilizer and you'll be able to find what you're looking for. Any other questions? I think that's it. All right. Well, thank you so much for tuning in and hopefully you uh, can go home and make some wonderful projects or take a project that you've already made and get it, get it nice and flat just the way you'd like to have it. Thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.